Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. It's Bertrude and today we're using a shape-shifting build and this guy is one horny little devil. Looking at the stats, we're a level 30 build, we've got 25 vigor and 27 faith and then minimum strength and dex for our weapons. We're using the opaline hard tier for the damage negation and the strength knot for a touch more damage and here's a little look at the armor and talismans we're using on the build. We've got two main weapons on the build, the first one being the ringed finger, and then we also carry the Nox Flowing Hammer. We've then got four incantations on the build, the first one of these being Catch Flame. We've then also got all of the three Crucible incantations, aspects of the Crucible Horns, Breath and Tail. And that's the bill guys, if you like the content please don't forget to like and subscribe, it'll really help the channel, but it's time for you lot to sit back, relax and enjoy the video. Alrighty guys, we're going to start off the video with a couple of nice little quick invasions here, just to show what this build's all about. We're going to be going in, causing a lot of damage, using our incantations, using the ashes of war on our weapons. Big flick on the finger. It's a really funky build, it's a really quirky, a little bit of a goofy build, but it all flows together really well. There is a theme that I wanted to go for with this build when I made it. Obviously, I wanted to get all of the three crucible incantations and put them together and use them on a low level build but then I also chose the two hammers on the build in the ringed finger and the nox flowing hammer for a bit of a you know a bit of a reason as well as I said there is a theme going on in this build and the theme to the build is that it's quite a transformative build it's a bit of a shape shifting build all of the three incantations that we're using the three crucible incantations the horns the breath and the tail they all kind of turn us into that crucible type lizard you know we've got the horns and, and the tail like transforming out of our body you know it's a transforming build so the weapons that we're using also transform that is kind of what i was going for with a builder i wanted it to be a shape shifter so we're shape shifting when we're using our incantations and our weapons also shape shift in the fact that they're not flowing hammer it goes all kind of like <laughs> you know what it does it goes all rubbery doesn't it, it turns into a big wet noodle turns into a bit big wet noodle when you use the ash of war and obviously the ringed finger being a really quirky weapon it just flicks them doesn't it it's just the best ash of war in the game it just a massive big flick right in the face and it's just a really quirky build when you put it all together we've also got catch flame on there which is just a really good spell to turn to when you know maybe i'm struggling to do a little bit of damage with my weapons i've got over level summons and all that nonsense Catch Flame is a good go-to when I need a bit of extra help. They're not the most reliable incantations on the build, the, the Crucible incantations, as stylish as they are, and they do some good damage. They're not always guaranteed to hit, especially the Horns. It's a really good spell, I absolutely love it. <laughs> it's, I really do enjoy using these spells, to be honest. I think they're absolutely awesome. But, you know, we just managed to kill the horse with the Horns there, but as I said, the Horns can be a little bit... Um, you know, they can be a little bit inconsistent. You don't always land it. It's got to kind of be the right situation to land. And if our opponents are moving around a little bit, if they're being a bit erratic, it can be quite hard to hit them with the horns. With the tail and the breath, really good incantations again. I really do enjoy using them, but they can be easily interrupted. So the three crucible incantations on the build, they're not the most reliable, as I said, as much as I do enjoy them. So catch flame. Is always there if I feel like I'm ever in a bit of a pinch and I need something that's going to be a bit more reliable and a bit more hard hitting. Our weapons on this build as well don't do the most damage. The Ashes of War do some good damage, especially the flick on the ringed finger. Does some really good damage, but again, you know, if I'm facing over level summons and whatnot, sometimes Catch Flame is just a really good go to when I just know that the weapons and the Crucible incantations are struggling a little bit in an invasion. But altogether, it's a really, really fun build. Really cool mix of incantations and ashes of war on the weapons. The weapons are just proper goofy. The whole build has got this kind of goofy feel to it. It's a shape-shifting build. And, you know, I just absolutely love it. I really enjoy it. And, uh, yeah, it's just a fun build. Nice hit on this summon there with the horns. We managed to land a good one. But these two, I'm not sure what level of summon is, but look at that. The horse just came in and killed us with the whips. Now, this is a level 30 build. 
and I was finding that I was really, really struggling. I went through a spell of a few invasions where I was just getting absolutely smashed all over the place. I was running into so many over level summons, look at this, I was just getting fireballed and spammed all over the place. There was there was loads of this going on. Like I said, I went through a spell where, where this build just felt really weak. As you can see, I just got absolutely smashed with a fireball there. Look at that, just one shot with a jumping big curve sword, instant blood proc. Loads of that going on, bit of this going on as well. Instant madness kill, you know what I mean? Instant death there with the madness. And I took a little step back and I thought, there's something not right here. It's a level 30 build and I'm feeling really underpowered. I went through a spell of feeling really underpowered. And then my mate, good old Mr. Drunk Souls, the one and only, said, why don't you just take this build up to level 40? You know, and then I thought to myself, I've got plenty of builds at level 40, I've got plenty of builds at level 30, and there's only a 10 level difference, but there is quite a big difference in the experience of invading. So I thought, yeah, why not, well, you know, just add 10 more levels, just take it up to level 40, add a level onto the weapons, and let's see how it feels at level 40. So I did that, and to be honest, the invasions improved straight away. I still ran into the occasional, like, over-leveled gank squad, which is just to be expected at low level. But, you know, it did improve, and level 40 for this build did feel a little bit better. As I said, it was a bit strange. I just went through a spell of, like, a couple of days invading on this build, where it just felt like the over-level summons were just insane. There, there was everywhere. The horrible gank squads. I just had a really hard couple of days invading on this build. I managed to get a good few invasions done. But, like I said, I took quite a few losses, and I don't know if I was just unlucky and I ran into a few pretty bad invasions, or I don't know if this build just needed the 10 extra levels and the increase um, to the weapon levels by one, I took the weapon levels up by one as well, and I don't know if it just needed that, so I'm not sure if, it was, if I was just unlucky, I don't know whether this build is genuinely sitting better at level 40 than it did at level 30, but either way, level 40, the invasion started feeling much better. This was the first one I got after I, after I increased up to level 40. I invaded this trio taking on the dragon. And uh, I knew that I had to kill them before they killed the dragon. Because I was pretty sure I'd be sent home if they managed to kill the dragon. So it was uh, all action. I got straight in there. And I tried to deal with these three before they dealt with the dragon. This one-on-one -on -one fight that I had against the horse after I killed the two summons really does show what is really good about this build. It kind of shines when it comes to mixing in our normal attacks with our Ashes of War. I can knock them down to the floor with the flick on the ringed finger and then I can pressure them either with Catch Flame or I can maybe use the horns or if they're low health I can try and finish them off with a Fire Breath. If not an incantation I can always switch to the Nox Flowing Hammer and use the Ash of War on that which can be which is actually really long range, it's surprising how far the Nox Flowing Hammer actually reaches. So you know, if I knock them down with a ringed finger, I can switch to the Nox Flowing Hammer and use the Ash of War on that to try and finish them off as they're rolling away. It just all flows together really well. The Shapeshifter, the Incantations and the Ashes of War in this build is where the combat side of it really does shine and come into its own. This was a really good invasion in Stormvale Castle against this duo. I don't know how many heals this guy had left at this point, but all I had to do was keep pressuring him. I had a feeling that he was quite low on heals, but he's doing a good job, you know, he's using that colossal great sword. So he's just got the poise to counter-attack me every time I get near him, and it turned into a little bit of a chess battle list. I was trying to find my windows to attack, and he was trying to find his windows to counter-attack. As you can see, that's pretty much what this fight has turned into. Again, that's where Catch Flame is coming into its own, because the hammers, you know, the hammers aren't good for chasing people down, but Catch Flame is, so having Catch Flame on this build is pretty vital to be honest. It really can be a lifesaver when I get people low health and I need to finish them off. Now the horse deer clearly ran out of heals, and looking back on this invasion, I really do wish I'd have just severed out there and let him progress and get up to the, to the, uh, to the grace. But in the heat of the moment, I thought to myself, we've just had a good battle, you've run out of heals, I thought that was a more honor honourable thing to do, to be honest, just give him a good death in style with the fire breath. But looking back on that invasion, we just had a really good one-on-one, -on -one. he'd clearly ran out of heals, the invasion was over. You know what I mean? I, I had the win in that invasion. Looking back, I really, really wish I had have just severed out and give him 
chance, you know, to run through and just get to the grace. You know, I just I wish I'd have done that, but sometimes in the heat of the moment you do the wrong thing and it's not it's not the end of the world. I'm sure he'll have respawned and got up to the grace absolutely fine, but yeah, sometimes you look back at invasions and wish you'd have done things differently, but it is what it is. It's not the end of the world, but if that guy's watching the video, apologies. Next time I'll sever out and do the more honourable thing. But this is a really cool two, uh, two on one here at Grey Rolls. Really stylish kill on the horse here coming up with the dragon breath. Not the dragon breath, sorry. The crucible breath. What, what a way to end an invasion. What a stylish way to end an invasion. That invasion overall against those two just went perfectly. Absolutely perfectly. Showed all of the kit off really well. Like I say, just a really fun build and at level 40 performing much, much better. Now this invasion against this trio, to be honest, was quite a strange invasion. It was a really good invasion, it turns into a proper battle, it's a really really good invasion experience this one, but as I said, it's a bit of a strange one. These three players, with all due respect, no ill intentions meant by this, but I don't think they're the most knowledgeable or you know the most capable when it comes to PvP. I don't think the world beaters when it comes to PvP, but what they are doing is playing really well together as a team. They're all using shields, using that turtle play style, they're all protecting themselves really well, and they're all staying really, really tight. And what that is doing is making it really hard for me to find windows to attack. It's making it hard for me to work around their offence when they're staying so close together and it's putting me on the back foot constantly. They're staying tight and they're being, they're being quite aggressive and they're all doing that kind of you know, stay behind the shield, poke out from behind the shield. And as I said it just made things quite difficult for me. But I don't have any problems with this whatsoever. In fact I think these three handle this invasion really well between them. It, t it, like I said, it turned into a really fun invasion, this one. I really weren't quite sure what to do or how to approach this because I weren't really doing enough damage to get in there and, and you know get a, get a guard break on one of them for a critical attack because they were playing so tight. Whenever I tried to get one of them on their own, the other two would be there backing them up. So all I had to do was kind of keep backing up and just try and get in and get my damage when I could. I really, really kind of... I had to think about how to work around these three that was playing so well together as a team. Yeah, re really, really, you know, fair play, hats off to them. They handled it really well, just as, you know, a trio should handle an invasion. They're not using crazy setups, they're not using anything stupid, it's just a really good team playing together with honest builds. Love it, absolutely love it. Now, as you just saw in the invasion, I managed to get rid of one of them with a little bit of help from the PvE. And I think that that summon who just died was the more over-leveled one out of the three. I don't want to say he was like massively over-leveled, but if you look at the damage that this guy's taking compared to the damage that that last guy who just died was taking, this guy's clearly more at a kind of level 30, level 40, level bracket. I think the other guy was clearly higher level than these two. So I was happy to get rid of him first, and once he was out of the picture, the invasion became a lot more simple. It was just a matter of putting a bit of pressure on these two, and it was game over. But as I said, as soon as we got rid of one of them, it became a lot easier. But overall, just a great invasion. Really, really fun one. It did last quite a while. I've cut this one down quite a bit. It was quite a long invasion. And it was just really satisfying. Although, like I said, you know, these three aren't necessarily the best PvP players in the world. I really did feel satisfied for getting the win in this one because they worked together so well and it was just for me really fun so GG's guys well played we all saw in the DLC trailer that we're potentially getting as well another crucible incantation how cool will that be if we do get the crucible incantation that was in the trailer the big wing attack the big flying wing attack you know the one I mean, where the crucible just flies up into the air and comes flying down with a big spear. If we get that, at, well, it looks like we are getting it in the DLC. If we get that in the DLC, how good will that be adding that to this build? I just hope 
it's around the same level of requirements as the other incantations are and they don't put some kind of 50 faith requirement on it to use or something like that i think if i can add that onto this build and use all four crucible incantations as well as the hammers that would just be absolutely perfect if they don't do that and they make it high level requirements so i can't use it on the build i will be pretty gutted but i'm looking forward to the dlc either way and looking forward to trying out that incantation just because i really like these three now this invasion spawn into this duo and i've got this idol kevin and first thing i do is go and get a backstab on him but then you know i don't just stay there and kill him i give him plenty of chances to kind of come back and wake up see if he's there see if he's not there you know i give him plenty of chance but after a while i just thought you've had your chances now you look like you might be over level, you've got two great curve swords, I'm going to just kill you and I'm going to deal with the host. I didn't want to just disregard him and as being idle and then you know have him turn up when I'm about to kill the host, have him come back from the toilet, have him, have him come back from having his big poo that he was having on the toilet and just come and get me from behind. So I thought I'll give you a chance, I'll give you a couple of attacks, I'll give you a chance to come back while I'm ignoring the host but now you're dead and now it's time for me to just kill your host in style. Look at that, Nox flowing hammer, Ash of War, the flowing form, great Ash of War, really stylish way to end an invasion. And yeah, pretty simple two on one. But this was an interesting one in Leonia of the Lakes, I've spawned in, and I'm fighting this guy here who's dressed as this kind of like, knight, simple knight setup. He's got the Claymore I believe, lightning infused, he's got the uh, lightning slash Ash of War on this weapon I believe, so he's going to be getting a nice lightning buff when he uses the Ash of War in water as well so you know i've got to be super careful of this guy he's clearly got his levels sorted on his build he's got a good kind of solid build he's got a lot of vigor he's obviously got his uh, build in a good place so i've got to be careful but he's, he's using the blue ring he's getting blue spawning in and look at that aspects of the crucible horns absolutely destroys the blue i think he thought he was dead there when he stood up but it doesn't matter either way because i managed to kill him and now it's back to me and the host but soon enough, he's got another hunter in, so now I've just killed the blue, and now there's another blue in that I've got to deal with. Managed to get a nice backstab on the horse there, try and follow that up with the horns, but as you can see, as I said earlier, you know, the horns could be a little bit um, unreliable. If there's any kind of sideways movement from the horse, or whoever I'm aiming it at, it can be a bit unreliable, doesn't always hit, but how good would that have been if it did hit him, you know? How good would that have been? What a stylish way to kill someone with the horns. So it's always worth trying just because style points. You know what I mean? Just because style points. But like I say, it doesn't always hit. Just took a massive bit of damage there from the lightning pot from the uh, from the blue. And they both put me under a bit of pressure. But look at that. The bloody fingers come in. I've got support. I've got support from a fellow invader. So I just need to back up, buy myself a bit of time. And then we can reevaluate. Our fellow red man's turned up here and he goes off to keep the horse busy which allows me to pressure the blue down with catch flame and I managed to take him out shortly. Look at this pressure that I can do with catch flame. He's on the back foot. The hammers, I don't think the hammers would have been able to keep him under that much pressure with the running attacks. As I said, they're not the best. I mentioned earlier, they're not the best uh, for chasing people down and pressuring people down. So catch flame comes in really handy in that instance. But unfortunately for me, before I kill that blue, it managed to inflict me with Scarlet Rock. I checked for bolluses and unfortunately I don't have any. Unlucky shot there from my fellow red man, he got me with the bow. It's just unfortunate when he's trying to pressure the horse, but he got me instead, but it is what it is. But yeah, I don't have any bolluses on me, so I can't heal that Scarlet Rock. So now it was a race against time. I know I've got to try and kill this horse with my red man, my fellow red man. We've got to try and kill this horse before the Scarlet Rock kills me. I'm running out of time here. I think the red man knew it as well. He could see that my health was going low. And he's trying to get a kill on the horse as well before I have to go. But at this point, I just kind of accepted my fate and knew that <laughs> I was going to die. <laughs> so yeah, really, really good invasion. That was a super fun invasion. But fair play to that blue, you know, he got me with the Scarlet Rock before he left, before I killed him, he managed to inflict me, and that is what managed to kill me in the end in that invasion. But I actually messaged the red man afterwards and we had a little chat. He said he actually tried to drop me some bolluses, he could see that I was inflicted with rot. He tried to drop me some bolluses and help me out, but unfortunately, he didn't have any, he couldn't drop them in time, whatever the case was. It didn't happen, but he managed to kill the horse anyway, so between us, we managed to kill a couple of blues, and then take out the host. So yeah, overall good invasion.
Now, I've ran into these two. I actually invaded these two earlier on when they was in uh, further earlier on into the academy. But I'm invading them again here. And they've tried to be clever. They've gone down the elevator. And I think they're expecting me to call the lift back up and go back down. But I try and be a little bit clever of my own here. I use the, uh, the, the finger to reposition. And I actually come up at the side of them. I don't think they was expecting this to happen. As you can see now, one of them is quite transfixed on the lift. And watch this. How do I not get a backstab here? Okay, I'm a little... And again. Look, two times there. Okay, I'm not exactly in the right position for the backstab. I'm a little bit off centre. But come on, game. Come on, game. You could have given me that backstab, surely. Surely. And I hope he absolutely pooed his pants because he weren't expecting me. <laughs> I thought I was being really clever there, got the reposition with the bloody finger and then I was going to come up behind him for a nice little backstab and I got robbed, absolutely robbed but the invasion goes on and I'm putting him under a good bit of pressure with my incantations and my weapons and I've got a feeling this one's going to be a GG's pretty soon we managed to get a kill with the crucible tail on one of them really good damage and now it's just the host it's going to be a done deal, it's going to be a GG, easy peasy we're going to finish on this kill guys, this is the last one of the video, I hope you've enjoyed watching, look after yourselves, look after each other and I'll see you all next time.